All right, this video, we're going to be continuing on with Atomic Highway with this little uh, addition right here, Irradiated Freaks. Um, you can see here, this is, uh, it's kind of difficult to see, but that's, uh, that's a rabbit humanoid, and he's riding a huge armadillo as a mount. So that's going to show you a little bit what Irradiated Freaks as a free download supplement adds to Atomic Highway. And... Uh, what I want to go through is a little bit of you know what's in the book. You know you're going to get you're going to get several things. For starters, you're going to get new mutations. Uh, you're going to get some new flaws, and then it's followed up by all new humanoid animals, uh, new additions, tons of them. I'll go over that here in a little bit. And then the real fun section, it's a little different, is the humanoid plants, and that really takes it more into the the Gonzo stratosphere. Next, you get a good selection more of mutant horrors. And that was a that was a, a kind of a beef I had with the, the regular book. It has a great section of new new mutant horrors, as well as giant insects. And then it's got a great little appendix that told, that lets you roll up random humanoids, and they could, uh, you know, you pretty much could start off with a completely blank character, and you can roll up and say, "What is this character going to be?" All right, he's a human. All right, fine, he's a normal human. Roll it up. Okay, he's a human animal. Let me roll on the uh, this type animal. It's this type animal. All right. What type of mutations does that does that breed does that species have? Um, and so you, you go through the character journey like that. So it's a great table. It's also got uh, a table in this this book. It's called the Mondo uh, Mutations Table, and that's for uh, all the mutations together and just completely random to give your characters whatever you need. It's also very useful if you need to make uh, all new monsters. You can just roll on that table and there's your new mutation for the animal that you have or the beast or whatever the case may be, you know, whatever it is. Um, and at the end it's got a little thing, a little section about how to make your own monsters going with that that table. It's got an index and it's a pretty good small little book. You'll see it's not very big but it is free and I'll have the link down at the bottom. But um, you know what I want to get into um, really is all these new mutations are awesome. Now you're going to have stuff in here that's really fun to play with. Um, you're going to have things like um, you know, breath fire, you breathe fire like a dragon. Uh, your body can morph into other shapes. Um, you know, good for camouflage. You've got there's one that's kind of neat. It's uh, it's called edible growths, and that's going to be for your planet, your plant humanoids, and uh, what that is is, you know, you're gonna have a a plant. Maybe it's a, it's a plant that's based off like a raspberry bush, and this, you know, man-sized raspberry bush that takes on a humanoid form is gonna have, you know, large raspberries that's gonna grow off its body and it can use for food, give it off you know, to its other players, and uh, you know, that's just that's just that's zangy, that's crazy. Uh, you can have an extra head. This is the book that has the extra head mutation. Very fun. You have to split up the skills. This head has this skills. This head has that skills. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's going to have things, flash flash packets. It's pretty much like these flesh, uh, organic flesh grenades that grow off somewhere off the body that you can flow, you can throw, and they, they, they flash like a flash uh, grenade. Um, you know, there's some, a lot of fun things. There's a healing molt where your character molts and heals himself. Plants can root themselves down into the ground, so they're pretty much like a tree. Uh, very difficult to move. Um, you know, you'd have to have a lot of you know, high strength to get that character out. And then you're gonna have, um, you know, you're gonna have things. <laughs> there's one last mutation that's fun. It's called Wandering Eye, and what it is is you literally pluck your eyeball out of your head. You know, you throw it down on the ground, and little stalks, you know, break out of the eye, and it walks around. And it you can see through it, and it's its own little entity that you can use uh, to spy, you know, around a corner, or maybe check out a ruin or something that's you know that might have something in there that you, you know, an enemy or whatever, a monster, or a Morlock or whatever. Um, so that's kind of neat. And then if it dies, your eye will grow back after, after a certain amount of days. That's just cool, you know. So it's got some fun things like that. It, it definitely hits more into the the crazy mutations. Some new uh, flaws, which those are always kind of nasty. Phobias, and um, maybe your brain is really uh, susceptible to psychic attacks. Um, you know, psionics and whatnot. Um, after that, you've got some new psychic powers. I, I failed to mention in the first video that it's got some small psychic powers. It's an optional rule if you want to have your mutants be psychic. And this gives you some more. And these are a little bit more aggressive. Uh, uh, 
uh, psychic powers, uh, pyrokinesis and stuff like that. A little bit more translocation, a little bit more offensive. Uh, and then you have just a great section. You've got a great section here of, of animal humanoids. So there you've got a frog, um, and it just it's you know you've got amphibians, you've got birds, you've got mammals, you've got um, you know just a whole variety from from snakes to turtles, uh, gila monsters, you've got platypus, shrew, porcupine. There's a bunch of different choices there, and there's what's one thing that's really neat is within each of those sections. Let's take for instance. Um, the gecko. Now, there's a common wall gecko you can choose. There's a crested gecko, gargoyle gecko. There's all these different types of gecko, and some of the geckos actually get different mutations if you choose within that that species of uh, animal. So, where let's look at the uh, let's look at the monitor lizard, the uh, Nile and water monitor lizards, they both get amphibious. But if you're not if you don't choose one of those, you can be something else, like a crocodile monitor, it gets the climber uh, mutation. So it lets you change within those animal humanoids. It gives you some options so you're not playing exactly the same type. You can kind of change it up a little bit within those animal mutations. And then we've got we've got the plants. Okay? We've got this is the plant humanoids right here. And you've got everything from eggplant, fern, seaweed, fungus, shrub. Now, the thing about plant humanoids is that they can't hear very well. And some of them are very slow. But they have some good survival techniques, uh, especially when it comes to food and things of that nature. Um, lots of times they have some sort of defense mechanism, uh, irritant bristles that grow upon the body. And that's going to be fun to give that character some more offensive things that are that are you know, or defensive, really, that are built into the character itself. Um, after that, you've got a, a selection of, of other mutant animals. And there's some really neat ones in there as well, really kind of different. There's one called a vampire. And you know, think, oh, it's a vampire. But really what it is, it's a 50-foot-long snake, black snake, that goes and, and all it does is it punctures um, gasoline cans, gasoline tanks. It kind of looks like black rubber. And so it just destroys and drinks gas tanks. After that, you've got the um, arthropod section, the giant insects. That's a great section. And I highly recommend you use those to kind of, you know, get that, that normal world aspect when you're, you know, your, your players are up against a large cockroaches and stuff like that. You know, that's going to remind them of the post-apocalyptic world that they're in. Uh, spiders, crickets, slugs, snails. That's fun stuff. Then you've got your 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 random humanoid chart, um, and then your your selection to make your own monsters. Now, what does this really bring um, to the game? What this is going to bring, you know, you're going to have a group. You can have a group of animal humanoids that are almost like the eighteen. Um, maybe they're for hire. Maybe uh, maybe they're they were they broke out of a lab. Uh, maybe they're very rare. Maybe that's the only your, your players are the only ones like that. So that gives a little bit of uniqueness to the post apocalyptic setting if that's what you want it to be. Um, you know, if you're playing plant humanoids, um, you could have a society, a tribal society, that now worship you. And, or maybe an, an, the, the bad guy, the NPC, is actually an evil plant humanoid. Um, and he, he's seen as a god to these tribal types. And so he uses his powers of uh, persuasion because they think that he's a god. Um, to take over more lands, or raid settlements, or raid, um, you know, just, you know, uh, terrorize the road, whatever the case may be, um, there's a lot of options here to kind of really ramp that game up mutant-wise. Um, obviously, the name ir ir Irradiated Freaks, uh, you know you're, what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot more mutations, a lot more flaws, not a whole bunch more flaws, but a good amount of flaws. Flaws are never fun. Um, but they do add character to the, your, you know, to the game. But... You know, your players are going to be very unique, um, and it's going to be a little bit more challenging. You know, you're going to have characters now that they're, maybe they are, a, you know, a gorilla, and what goes along with that? Maybe he's a frog. One thing to know is that if you pick a very small animal humanoid that's under a certain amount of weight in real life, it's going to have a very low amount of hit points, less so than other animals. And if you pick an animal like a bear that's going to have, that's, you know, very heavy, very large animal, it's going to have a lot more hit points. So keep that in mind. 
Um, and you can add mutations to these animal humanoids, make them even more of a freak. You know, but with that, being an animal humanoid, uh, like that, you could have a group of raiders that absolutely hate all mutants. And you're especially, uh, uh, you know, hunted down by them. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, being either stand out as something amazing and uh, people really are in awe of, or something that's that even more so than normal mutants they really really hate. You know, not only do they have to mess with, uh, you know, humans that have uh, evolved into something you know strange and monstrous, but now you've got you've got animals that are taken over or animals that they see as a threat. So you can have a lot of pl fun with that as a game master and as a player. You know, you get to relive that, uh, that Ninja Turtle type aspect, or Elephant Man, um, hell, Howard the Duck, whatever you want. The game's got it there to add that extra addition to it. So, I recommend it. It's good for Atomic Highway to go along with it. It's, uh, it's again, like I said, it's a free download. So both those are free. Go try Atomic Highway. Ramp it up or keep it slow as much as you want. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, let me know what you think uh, if you do have it, and um, thanks for watching.